Right, I'm going to be changing the heat set on this. Um, first thing I'm going to do, obviously, drain the boiler out, isolate the gas. Start by undoing the complete fan assembly. So I'm going to take this hole out and then we can tackle with the hydraulics afterwards. All right, gas connection's undone. 13 mil nut up here. Now, depending on what year it is, you'll either have the little retaining nut or you have this plate that holds the top in. Once that's all done, you just grab the fan, spin it. That spins forward. Let's make sure the grooves line up there and then it will just lift out. Fan assembly up. Now we can start working on the flow, the return, and the flue connections. Also, when removing the fan, have a look at the gas pipe tube. Check it for any cracks, nicks, splits, anything like that. This one's a good condition, so does doesn't need replacing. But I always keep one spare just in case you do remove this and you find that this is split. Right, all electrical connections removed. You can leave the electrolyzers in for the time being because when we take it out, we can. Have a look at all that but yeah you've got your NTCs removed electrode connections removed our heat stat connections removed want to pop that out and pop the flute up like so so that moves up because that's all going to come out with the heat that's going to come out with the heat exchanger so you want that to be disconnected so it's flipping out there Prize that off. I've stopped this in WD 40 already, so it makes it a little easier for it to come off. Right, there we go. That swings out the way. Now, underneath here, you've got a retaining nut for the sump at the bottom of the heat exchanger. There's no water or anything inside it, it's literally just a retaining nut. That's probably from the W40. That's sprayed inside there. And now we've got to undo the return connection. But don't undo that. Put a jammer screwdriver underneath here and then lift it up. All right, I've got my big screwdriver in there and you wanna loose that connection is the one that you want to worry about just get a long screwdriver whatever you can underneath it and then pull it up don't worry if you damage the sump because we're going to be changing that comes with the main heat exchanger anyway um you want to get enough leverage to be able to pop that out and now at the top there's a bracket this has got lift up and out Change out so that's the little lip there. A little notch that that these two back teeth need to go into. You need to make sure when it goes back in, it goes in and then drops down into it. All right, so that's new heat cell, old heat cell. Um, comes with a new gasket, but I've booked up the new electrodes because. I had a feeling these were not going to be in the greatest nick, so I'm going to change the electrodes over, swap all the sensors over, 
um, that's got to come off there, go on there, put it all back together, I'll basically build it on here and then pop it back into there. Now this return pipe, the reason why we don't take it out is because grease this up and the weight of the heat cell will pop itself back straight onto it. All right, new heat cell, lubed, 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 lubed. Now Worcester themselves say, don't undo this connection. Um, otherwise you're gonna have a lot more harder time trying to get it back in. The weight of the heat cell should make that connection. So we're gonna try and get that back in now. All right, that's the heat cell on. So you saw how I pushed it in, you go in at an angle, bottom in first, then bring it in. Make sure you get the two hooks to go into the top there. And then literally, boom, slide it down. That will connect onto the return pipe. Make the seal, push all this down so that it's... And then, retaining nut, flow connection, and we're good to go. Right, that's all the hydraulic connections done. Now, before I start putting the fan and the gas connection back on, I'm just gonna top up the pressure to make sure that we haven't got any... Any leaks? Okay. Right, that's filling up. So far, so good. One bar. Nothing there. Let's get out to about one and a half just to be sure. I mean, the only hydraulic connection we've changed is the return and the flow. So nothing else should be disturbed. Right, that's at one and a half, so let's shut that down. Right, so just gonna vent the top of the main heat exchanger. Um, I just normally attach a bit of U-gauge hose to it, direct it to the sink, and... Changer and the Worcester Green Star, all done. Pressure's holding, no leaks, no leaks. Now just got to do 26.9 checks, pack it up, and on to the next one.